Well, hello, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's uh, member town hall with uh, your, your uh, university recreation team here at UAB. Uh, we're going to get started in just a moment, um, but uh, in the meantime, I just want to let everybody know that uh, everybody's webcams uh, on the session are turned off, um, except for the panelists, uh, as are your microphones. Um, should you have questions at any time during this session, uh, please feel free to type those questions into the questions panel under the GoToWebinar control panel, and uh, we can uh, answer those as we go along, or there will definitely be a dedicated question and answer time at the end of the session as well. This session is being recorded, so if you need to step out or if you uh, miss something, uh, we will be posting this recording with uh, subtitles uh, on the reopening page of the uh, University Recreation webpage uh, probably in the next uh, couple of days. So without any further ado, uh, uh, thank you for joining us. I'm going to turn it over to Craig Decker, the Director of, Camp of University Recreation here at UAB. Thanks, PJ. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, real quick, I uh, would like to introduce all of our panelists. We have Stacy Mylene, our Senior Associate Director for Programs, Seneca Wilson, our Associate Director for Facilities and Guest Services, and Henry Kniffel for Assistant Director for Marketing and Membership. Um, as you see on your screen, we will be covering many topics today regarding our reopening. Uh, through the presentation, we will answer the questions asked during the registration process. Um, however, uh, as mentioned, there will be a question and answer time at the end. As you're aware, we are planning for the August 17th reopening, which is on Monday. Um, on the slide, you're currently seeing um, our planned hours. Um, however, the spaces available within facility and the hours of the aquatic center might need to be adjusted based on usage and staffing, et cetera. So for example, we're navigating the process of the re-entry for our students and making sure that everybody is uh, tested and has that negative test before they come to work for the first time uh, as they come back to school starting on the 24th. There was a question about swim lessons. We'll cover that later in the presentation. Um, also, there was a question from a student asking about access. Um, if you are a registered student, your access will come across automatically. There's nothing special uh, that you need to do. But if you're on the webinar today, welcome to campus. As we reopen the facility, we have been working with UAB administrators and others to prepare our policies and procedures and our impact on our areas. When we reopen on the 17th, these areas are going to be closed. We understand the locker rooms will have a tremendous impact and are continually monitoring state of Alabama guidelines and working with UAB health experts uh, and administrators to get those open as soon as possible. And then the game room and fitness studios have been repurposed. Uh, we'll talk about those later, but we wanted to include them here because technically they are closed for how we normally operate, uh, but we will have some use in those spaces. As students and employees, you'll be required to show the least risk uh, message from Health Check. The e easiest way to, to do that is through the passport feature. Um, as, you, as you complete your health check and simply show us that screen, um, or when you finish that program, the health check, you'll see the Get Passport button, um, and then you'll load that on your phone, and you can simply show us that screen as you enter. If you're not affiliated with a UAB, but you're a, a partner of somebody who is, and you have a membership, you'll just be required to answer the screening questions that are based on the UAB health check. Uh, only students 18 uh, and older um, and members 18 and older are permitted in the facility. Um, just remember that um, as a student who might be under the age of 18, um, you, however, you are still legally a minor. Um, once you enroll at UAB and become an active student, your student status kind of trumps that from a university standpoint. So you will have, be able to access the facility. Uh, but at this time, we're not allowing guests or minors in the facility, um, and we'll update that as that information changes. Social distancing must be practiced by everyone. You'll see later in the presentation our efforts to help facilitate that, but we, we hope that you all help us facilitate that as well. The face masks must be worn by everyone at all times, while even while exercising, other than while in the pool swimming. These are just some helpful tips for how to properly wear the mask. However, our staff will be here to guide you through this uh, if necessary, but probably by now we all have been well practiced in the art of face mask wearing. And then a few other measures to help us reduce touch points within the facility are as follows. 
Uh, we won't be accepting cash as a form of payment um, through our, our services. Um, we will not be offering towel service for members and our equipment issue will be closed. Um, and again, those are to, to kind of limit the touch points. And then we have disabled the drinking fountains that you would put your mouth near or on, uh, but we do have the refilling stations available. Uh, so we ask you to bring your, your own water bottles to get those refilled. And there's a few of those throughout the facility. Now we're gonna take some time and walk through some area specific policies. We have tremendous amount of signage in the facility um, to help alert everyone to these. This is more of an FYI purpose today where we're not expecting anyone to remember to, to memorize all of this as you enter the first time, but it is all on our website um, that was mentioned uh, and that you probably found this town hall from. Uh, so in the fitness center, uh, we have broken up that area into two main larger spaces, but then within that, uh, we'll have a cleaning schedule that'll be specified. Uh, as well. But the lower fitness area will have that capacity of, of 40 and then upper fitness, uh, the occupancy of 20. Uh, the fitness center equipment has been reorganized to again allow for that social distancing piece. So we just ask you to, to kind of respect that uh, structure to make sure that we can keep everybody safe and keep that social distancing uh, in place. And then as mentioned in the bottom there, there is the cleaning schedule. Um, so we've broken up the area into those seven um, spaces uh, and we will be closing those off at designated times just to make sure we can do our heavier cleaning. But in the meantime, we still expect you all to clean your equipment before and after use, just like we do in our normal um, operating times. And then the Iron Cave, uh, we have a max capacity of five in there. Um, however, based on the layout, we might have to structure um, some of the equipment. And so you might not be able to use everything, but you'll be easily able to access the, the items that are available and we'll have all that uh, noted out as well. I mentioned earlier, the game room has been repurposed. We were able to put, throw in some cardio equipment in there to allow for more usage of the cardio equipment. Uh, and we took down the tables to again, encourage the social distancing piece in that space. Um, and we'll make that available um, once we can, but it is currently unavailable until further notice. The racquetball and squash courts and our studio of five um, is a one per space occupancy. Um, and those areas are gonna be reserved. And we'll talk about that a little bit later um, during an update from Seneca. Uh, we ask that you kind of wait outside that designated spot uh, to help make sure that we're, we're giving everyone the space they need. And then on our track, we have an occupancy of 10. Uh, and, and as we uh, kind of break away from our normal there, we're asking everyone um, to be on the outer lane uh, to make sure that we again, are having people pass and that kind of stuff. And then when we do need someone to pass, we have ample space for them to do so. And then our center court and forecourt areas, um, for open recreation purposes, they have a two per court occupancy that works out to the one per half court. Um, and you must bring and use your own equipment. Uh, again, as mentioned earlier, the equipment issue uh, will be offline during uh, this time. And then we're, we're making sure that no one does any sort of team oriented informal use um, on those courts. There will be some academic classes that utilize that space um, as they needed extra space to be able to allow for their own social distancing as part of the hybrid model. And we'll make sure those times are denoted on our website. Swimming lanes, um, we will have these um, the lap lanes and we've actually added another lane uh, that is normally a part of the leisure pool to make sure that we have as much space uh, in that pool as possible. Um, it will be one person per lane, um, which for you lap lane swimmers, that's maybe a breath of fresh air so we don't have people sharing a lane right now. Um, and this is again, another space that will be asking for reservations just to make sure that people don't come to the rec center unnecessarily if a, if a lane's not gonna be open. We will allow some drop-in space so you potentially um, could show up and maybe a lane would be available, but we are asking people to, to reserve those spaces. Um, before you enter the pool, we are requesting that patrons take a soap shower prior to use. Uh, we will have the two all gender locker rooms, which are private locker rooms available, um, but just remember there are only two of those. Uh, so we do encourage you to take that shower beforehand. If, if not, they are available, but there might be some waiting involved. Uh, now Seneca will walk us through the facility changes. Thank you, Craig. My name is Seneca Wilson. I'm the Associate Director for Facilities and Services. And today we're gonna talk about facility changes. 
And um, we are very excited to have you guys back into in the facility. Um, some of the changes are going to be, as you can see right here from this picture, signage has been placed in front of the building and throughout the facility to as a reminder to practice social distancing. Um, we have identified entry doors and exit doors at the main entrance and throughout the facility as well. And as you can see, next slide, correct, thank you so much. Um, as you can see, as you enter the facility, um, we, we have placed or installed hand sanitizer stations at the entry, entrance and exit of the building. So you can be able to um, sanitize your hands at that time. So as you can see from this picture as well, you can see the stanchions in front of the, in front to direct you towards those, those turnstiles to leading you into the facility. And it's also leading you out the facility as well. Next slide. And in this, in this picture, we are closing down the middle turnstile to create the appropriate distance for you um, as you are entering and exiting the facility. Uh, and as you can see to the right, we have also placed plexiglass at the membership desk, customer service desk, and now door pursuits for your safety and our, and our student safety as well. Next slide. There's also signage throughout the facility as a reminder to practice social distancing. Other signage you will see in the facility as well will consist of traffic of flow, conduct, code of conduct, please wait here, policy changes and capacity signage as well. Speaking of traffic of flow, the main stairwell going up to the studios um, is one way only. And the fitness center stairwell will be one way going down. The main stairwell going down to the first level, um, down to aquatics, it will be a two-way traffic where we will have signs stating, please wait here um, and, until the stairwell is clear. And as you can see, um, this sign as well, these are some of, some of the signs that you will see throughout the facility. Also, we will have directional signage that will show you the traffic that we want you to go throughout the facility as well. Next slide, please. Here in the fitness center, the lower and upper fitness center, we have placed equipment six feet apart in the facility. Patrons will only be allowed to use every other piece of equipment. Um, we have provided a schedule in, in the fitness center, also online, to show you areas that will be closed for deep cleaning. So you are able to modify your workouts or adjust your normal workout schedule. In addition, you go to the next slide, please, Craig. In addition, we have placed some equipment in the game room area to create more space, um, create more space so you can, so we can have um, other areas in the facility to work out. Uh, the, as you can see in this picture, the games in the game room will be, will not be available. Um, but the racquetball course will be available. Also, what we have done is li limit the amount of equipment that are out to minimize touch points and also to help our staff with cleaning. And you will see that throughout the fitness center. And as we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, we will have capacity signage throughout the facility and on each door you will see a capacity signage that lets you know how many people are allowed in that area and with that we will have our students monitoring those areas walking throughout the facility to make sure that we are not at capacity and if we are we will have individuals wait until um, we are allowed to let other people in And as you're walking out the door, as you can see, you exit to the right. And we want to make sure that you also, as you're leaving, use the hand sanitizer station as well. And then we can go to our next slide. As Craig mentioned earlier, we are allowing you guys to rent, uh, reserve 
um, lap lanes, racquetball course, and Studio 5. And so how do you do that? You want to go to our website. Uh, on the front page, you will see um, a re-entry re-entry instructions and it's on our University Recreations website. But we also have where you can reserve it on our UAB mobile app. So take advantage of that as well. Um, you can only reserve no earlier than 48 hours in advance. So um, uh, no reservations will be taken in person and or over the phone. So, but if you need help, um, um, there will be someone to help you um, with those instructions as well. So, and Stacy will be talking about um, programming. And so I'm gonna hand it over to her. All right, thanks, Seneca. Um, yeah, so we've made some adaptations to the programs and services that we're offering as well, too, uh, due to the nature of limiting touch points and large gatherings. Um, so with the aquatics area in particularly, we are not offering group lessons. We are only going to be focused on private and semi-private lessons uh, for our students and for our members. As Craig mentioned earlier, no minors will be permitted in the facility uh, and no guests or non-members will be permitted in the facility. So our private lessons and semi-private lessons will only be open to those who are students and members at this time. Uh, similarly to the normal program registration process, you simply will go on our website and register through the program registration portal, or you can sign up at the membership desk in person in the recreation center. So that process has not changed. The competitive sports area has made some modifications to offer some esports programming in light of some in person intramurals. Again, our intramural sports are open to students and faculty staff on campus. So any of them are eligible to join our esports program that we will run throughout the fall semester. We also are offering some virtual trivia nights that anyone is eligible to join in on those. They'll have various topics that we'll host twice a month for that area. We will have limited in-person offerings for intramural sports this year. Again, we need to be uh, practicing social distancing when it comes to these activities. So we plan to offer badminton, table tennis, and possibly a couple of other outdoor activities that our um, students and our faculty staff can participate in while social distancing on campus. The fitness area has made a major shift to offer a variety of UFIT classes in a virtual format. We've been doing this all summer since our facility closed late last spring. Uh, so we will continue with those virtual offerings as we move into the fall semester here. Uh, we also will continue to offer virtual personal training sessions. So the same way you sign up for normal personal training packages and get paired with a personal trainer will apply to these sessions as well. You now will simply have the option of doing either in-person personal training sessions or take advantage of these virtual opportunities if you're not able to make it to campus. We will have a limited in-person class schedule as well. Um, so we will be offering about two to three uh, in-person UFIT classes per day uh, per studio, depending on instructor schedule and availability. But the idea is to have some in-person offerings while maintaining the majority of the classes in that virtual format. Personal training sessions, again, will also take place in person. Our staff will be practicing social distancing during these sessions, however. Uh, so things like spotting will be modified by our personal training staff in order to maintain that distance during that program. The outdoor pursuits area, we have started a virtual team building session. So this is a service we had previously offered in person, involves a lot of close contact with participants. So it's something that we've moved to a virtual format. Uh, so different groups and organizations on campus can still take advantage of this service. However, it will be in that virtual format rather than in person this fall. 
We are still operating our rental center at its regular capacity, so equipment rentals are still available to anyone in the, the community, whether you're a member or non-member. However, we are operating by appointment only, so you will need to go online or call um, our Outdoor Pursuits office to schedule your equipment pickup and your drop-off. That way it can be done in that appointment time frame. We're currently not offering any outdoor trips at this time. This is something that we will be reevaluating as we move into the spring semester. Uh, due to COVID restrictions and university guidelines on travel, uh, we are limiting those opportunities at this time, but hope to revisit them as we get into the spring semester. Uh, with our wellness program area, we currently are not offering massage therapy. Again, due to contact and touch points, this is a service that we are going to hold off on at this time. Uh, we also are limiting our nutrition programs in person sessions as well. And due to minor restrictions on campus, we will not be offering any in-person youth programs. We have some plans to offer some virtual offerings um, for youth and minors uh, surrounding the day camp timeframe that we would normally have. Uh, don't quite have those plans finalized yet, but anything we do offer for minors in the fall will be only in a virtual setting. We wanna make sure that all of our students and members know um, how we're responding to COVID-19 and what steps we're taking as a staff to ensure your safety as well as our staff safety. We wanna make sure we create an environment where everyone feels comfortable uh, to come utilize the facility and take part in the in-person programming and services that we are offering at this time. Our staff are working hard to follow CDC guidelines, Alabama state guidelines, as well as UAB implemented guidelines. Uh, we are doing a variety of training sessions with our staff to get them prepared to return to the work setting in this different environment that we're gonna be facing at this time. We are doing employee screenings, very similar to the participant screenings as you come in to utilize the facility to ensure that our staff are not experiencing symptoms as we place them in the work setting. We're also limiting areas of congregation. So we've removed uh, furniture that's more in lounge areas. Uh, we've eliminated those types of spaces. That way we can limit congregation around those areas. Um, Seneca talked about equipment. Uh, we're removing a lot of that extra loose equipment in order to reduce those touch points throughout the facility. And uh, we've mentioned moving that all to ensure that we are social distancing uh, with our members and with our staff. We have a very rigorous cleaning schedule that we've added uh, for our staff. So we will be doing that extra cleaning and disinfecting throughout the day. Uh, we also will have um, certain closures throughout the facility at times that will allow us for deeper cleaning as well. And then our reduced hours of operation, as Craig mentioned earlier, will extend throughout the fall semester in order to limit our exposure time and allow for that additional cleaning. So at this point, I will pass it along to Henry to talk about some membership information. So as everybody on this call, I'm super excited to reopen this facility and welcome you guys back. Um, as many of you know, um, URIC offers a few different payment options for members to choose from. And so we had to work through um, those few different scenarios to accommodate for each of the groups. Um, so the first group are members who paid in full. And since um, we closed our operations on March 15th, um, we'll apply um, the amount of days since the closure until Monday um, to their expiration date. So we'll extend their membership by the exact amount of days. Um, the second group are our members who are uh, who are paying for their memberships monthly with the credit card on file. Uh, and so again, the last um, credit card billing has been processed in March and that paid for the whole month of March. And so we'll apply um, the second half of March um, towards the second half of August. And then we'll restart um, the, our normal credit card billing in September with the anticipated date of September 2nd. The, um, the third group um, are our members who are paying monthly out of their payroll with payroll deductions. Um, we haven't processed payroll since we closed. And so in order for us to respond better to all the external uh, circumstances and to be more uh, transparent and responsive, we will not be restarting payroll deductions 
uh, as we reopen. Um, payroll deductions always paid for some period of time in advance. And so as we transition, we'll set those members, um, we'll, we'll um, basically set those members with an expiration date to reflect the amount of time they prepaid for. And we'll ask members to transition to our monthly billing with the credit card on file. Um, the process is actually very easy. Um, we offer a few different options. You can call our membership desk on Monday and we can add your card on file over the phone or you can do it um, from the comfort of your home um, from our member online portal as well as from the um, UIB UREC mobile app. Um, if you have any specific questions to your um, membership, please contact our membership team and then we'll work with you individually just to make sure we give you the exact information regarding it to your account. Um, we also have to address the, our non-prime member group, the early bird and night owls, due to, um, to reflect some of the um, hours of operations adjustments. And so um, to move forward, our non-prime members will have access to the facility from 6 a.m. until 3 p.m. So normally they had um, a six hour period of window during the day. Now we extend by nine from 6 a.m. until 3 p.m. And they'll have unlimited time on the weekends as well. Um, and so um, since we're transitioning from the payroll to uh, our credit card billing, we're more flexible in terms of our freeze membership freeze and uh, cancellation procedures. Uh, we no longer require 45 day notice for our membership freeze. So if you'd like to freeze membership, we can do it uh, at the end of the month, as well as um, we uh, do the same thing with cancellations as well. Um, one, one additional uh, policy change on our membership freeze, um, we no longer require the cap of six months. So members may freeze their membership uh, longer than six months if they wish to do so. Great. So I think that brings us up to a uh, question and answer period. So I'm gonna invite all the panelists to come back on screen for us here. And um, we had a couple questions come in during the session here that we'll, we'll address. Uh, if you have any questions based on the uh, information that, that you've seen here, uh, please feel free to type those into the questions panel and we'll go ahead and, and try to address those as, as best we can. Um, so first one is kind of a clarification. Craig, you touched on this and uh, Stacy, you, you kind of mentioned it a little bit too um, with, with the minor policy. But if someone is a UAB student and they are underage, as they are under uh, 18 years old, they will still be allowed in the facility this fall. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Great. So yeah. So your your status as a student does uh, um, supersede your status as a minor. So if you are a student and under uh, under eighteen, you can still come use the facility this fall. Um, Henry, this one's for you. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Pakal here said, uh, "I am a student this fall. I downloaded the UAB Campus Recreation app, and it shows that I need a member ID. Where do I find that ID?" Excellent. So that ID is actually different from Blazor ID, uh, and you'll have to contact our membership team um, to um, share your online services credentials with you, and you will use those to access the uh, mobile app or the online member portal. Um, the easiest way to do it is do it over email. The email address is uh, recmember at uab.edu, or you can call our uh, front desk as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just go ahead and type that address into the questions panel so that uh, if you need that uh, address, recmember at uab.edu, it's right there in the questions panel as well. Um, very good. Uh, UAB students are automatically members, correct? That is correct. As long as you're a registered student, you are good to go. Great. Uh, Stacy, this is for you. Uh, will the UFID classes still be held with social distancing guidelines? Yes, 100%. So we have actually done capacity uh, 
accounts for each studio space that will allow us to um, have just a minimal number of participants in each class, uh, but that way they can practice social distancing along with the instructor. So class sizes will be smaller. Uh, we've also marked off the spaces within each studio, that way participants kind of know their area uh, to stay within, and um, the social distancing will be practiced uh, throughout every class that we offer in person. Fantastic. And um, this wasn't a question, but I'll just ask it as a, as a clarification. Will there be any aqua fitness classes offered um, in person? Not at this time, no. Um, and that kind of relates to the next question here is when you do a lane res lap lane reservation, can we do our own aqua exercises in those lanes or are we restricted to only doing lap swimming? You are able to use the lap lane as you wish or as you see fit. You will need to provide or bring your own equipment. However, though, I know we typically have the equipment available uh, on the shelves within the pool area. Uh, that is not available at this time. So if you wish to do any exercises on your own, you just must remain in your own lap lane. Uh, we won't uh, permit patrons in the leisure area at this time, but you can definitely utilize your lap lane provided you bring your own equipment to do that. Great. Uh, Seneca, I think this one's probably uh, best for you. So uh, this patron said that they left things in their locker. How do you get them uh, if the locker rooms are going to be closed down? Um, I'm going to let Henry answer that question, but um, it's, we, we definitely have a process for that. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to Henry. Thank you, Seneca. Um, so to address that question, we do have a process in place. So all you have to do, just please email our, again, direct member email, and what we'll do, we'll bag it for you and, and set up an appointment for you to come in and pick up your belongings. Great. So direct member at uh, uab.edu, and we'll set up a time to, to come get it, and we will we will go into the locker room and, and put everything in a bag for you, and then and you can pick it up. Great. Uh, See, will there be a designated space to stretch or non-equipment use? So flex training, doing you know personal yoga, Pilates, whatever else. Um, I guess that is, is probably a better one for you, Seneca, right? Yeah, I can, I can definitely answer that question. All right. Yes, we will have uh, we have designated areas to stretch throughout the facility. Um, is one person capacity in the, in those areas? But we do have some areas to stretch. Um, and we will have a time limit on those, so other people are able to um, be able to use that space as well. Great. Uh, Stacy, back to you, Fit. Um, will there be a requirement to register for those live UFIT classes in advance? We're looking at that option currently. That's something we haven't um, quite finalized just yet. Uh, our plan is to start to see what kind of demand that we're having for the in-person classes. And if we start to see that they're reaching that capacity, then we are going to implement a registration process. It'll still be a free, uh, you won't have to pay to attend the UFIT classes, uh, but we will do a similar process that we are looking at for lap lane reservations or racquetball court reservations. It would be the same type of process through the app or online to simply register for a space in the class. Um, but at this time, we're going to see what that demand looks like for the in-person classes, see if we're reaching our capacities. And if we are at that point, then we will implement the registration process. And if people were already used to, to doing F45 class reservations or, or site class reservations, the process is very similar. It's just not, uh, there's just no fee associated. You don't have to purchase a package before you make the reservation. But if you're used to going to the app and making your reservation for those classes, the process will be very similar. Exactly. Um, but like like uh, Stacy said, only if uh, we do see a demand such that we need to um, implement that. Now, the, speaking of demand, that kind of takes an, a great segue into our next question here. Um, what happens when capacity is reached in a given space? Will members be forced to just wait outside and congregate or are they asked to go somewhere else? How are you planning on handling uh, the capacity control in these different spaces? So we have our supervisors uh, roaming the facility and, and monitoring those spaces, and they have they will have a a, a le an iPad to count the people in each space, and we will ask at, when that room get into capacity, we will ask people to stay either go to a, a different part of the facility to use that space, such as the game room, um, or um, ask, ask them to have a different 
workout or uh, adjust their workout to to meet their needs. Um, and then as people are waiting, we will remind uh, the patrons that there is a time limit when someone is waiting for a machine. Great. Uh, another question came in for Henry. Um, my 17 year old has a minor account adjoined to mine. Uh, since we're not allowing minors in the facility, will their monthly charge automatically be adjusted to not charge for the minor during this time? Or uh, is, do they have to be proactive and reach out to you to make that adjustment? Great question. So since the minors will not be allowed in the facility, we'll basically freeze their membership until they're allowed back on campus. Okay. So yeah, we will automatically take care of that for you. Um, and um, if, if you would like to follow up, I'm sure our contact information will be up here specifically. So if you're still concerned about that, then definitely uh, reach out to us. We'll be uh, uh, more than happy to, to um, you know, absolutely verify that your specific account has been handled. But our plan is to go through all of the minor accounts and freeze the minors on the account and not charge those, uh, those fees uh, for the time that the minors are not allowed in the facility. That just about wraps up the questions I think we've had so far. I will just give a couple more seconds to um, for people to jump on in and ask their last minute questions here. Uh, however, while we're waiting, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just ask uh, Craig, uh, if people um, have any additional questions or looking for more information on this, where can they go? Is there a space on the website where they can look at and, and or an email address they can send a, a question to? Yeah, so the, the easiest way to access that uh, is our reentry website, which is a there's a banner on our homepage that directly links you to that. Um, and we'll make sure that that banner is always at the top of the website. Um, as we know, that'll probably be the most frequently uh, accessed piece of our website. Uh, we purposely made that kind of the hub. So that way we don't have outdated printed uh, materials in the facility the website will be updated to reflect any changes that need to happen um, and then the rec member email address is the best email address because then uh, there's people monitoring that address and they will forward your question on to the appropriate party uh, so instead of you trying to search and find the right person if you email that we'll do the hard work for you and we'll find the right person to give you that answer Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, especially if people are watching the recording of this later on, I know that we have a lot more people registered than actually attend. So if you're watching the recording, if you have a question, please uh, send an email to recmember at uab.edu um, and then also check out the re-entry web page uh, linked to a banner on top of the, the main campus rec web, uh, university recreation web page, excuse me. Uh, one last question popped in, then we'll wrap things up. Um, what, this one's for Stacy. What kind of mask requirements are there for use of the pool? So the only requirement is to wear your mask into the aquatic center uh, until you go to get into the water. You are permitted to take your mask off as you get into the water to begin your workout or, or lap swimming. So we ask that then when you get out of the water, you put your mask back on as you're roaming through the aquatic center as well. So in and out uh, while you're not swimming uh, is our requirement for wearing the mask while in the pool area. Fantastic. All right, guys, thank you all so much for your time. I appreciate you joining uh, and, and take time out of your day to answer the questions for, for your members here. Thank you to all the members and people who joined on and to all those of you watching the recording later on too. We can't wait to have you back in the facility. We've been very, very lonely without you. Um, and so uh, we're definitely looking forward to seeing you back on the uh, 17th. So uh, everybody have a great day. Have a great week. Stay safe, wear your masks, and we'll get through this. Take care, everybody.